Yes, yes, this is the Black Elvis. Shout out to all my Caucasian friends and all my friends of other ethnic groups. This is not for you because then if you're my friend, I know you're not a racist. America, America KKK was built on violence and racism. I'm tired of people not acting like they don't see what's going on. When you have a blatant racist as a president, racist people feel a sense of entitlement. So this is what you're seeing today. How many times are police going to kill an unarmed black man on camera and people act like it's okay? No, that's not okay. Hey, what's going on? This is E. Jones, bottom to the top hoops. You already know your boy, Black Elvis, we're in the building. Yo, yo, L, man. I'm finding it uh, kind of challenging right now to stay focused on, on um, you know, sports because society's reflecting something, something different, man. What, what's, what's your mindset right now? Absolutely. I think at, on, a, on a day like this, after seeing all that's going on, I don't really think it's uh, appropriate to talk too much basketball today. Well, I'm going to do my best to, to share in an optimistic um, and a, a, a fair and honest perspective um, from, from my lens uh, to, to try to offer solutions and identify, you know, what, what we're going through as a, uh, a country and as a nation. Yeah. So I that- think this is, these, are, these are world problems, man. Um, First of all, before we even get started, man, you look like you've been working out, man. Ow. My yo, body and soul. Yo, ready for war, man. I got on my camo. I got the black on. Yo, I was going to see you. I was going to say to you, you're looking like you're ready. Yo, man. Desperate times call for desperate measures, man. So Absolutely. We're going to jump right into it, Al. Um, here goes okay. nothing. So in, 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 in um, the last week here, uh, in New York City, there was uh, Central Park Karen, who made the call that most know about uh, and and made a false accusation about being harassed by a black man in, in Central Park. You first see that video, what's the first thing you think of? Uh, imagine the people who actually has been through that before and didn't have video to prove it. On both sides. That was the first thing that came to mind. Thank God he had a camera and he was conscious enough to actually film it. But did you notice at the end how she got aggressive and started rushing at him? Well, I I, I felt like there was there was a, a sense of entitlement. There was an elitist attitude, uh, and and you you know obviously, uh, as I followed the story, there was an extreme amount of contrition on the apology, let me get on CNN and let me do all of these things. And, you know, I was told, uh, think twice, speak once. And mm. in the heat of the, uh, the moment and emotions, sometimes your emotions can lead you to making statements or doing things that may not be of sound mind, body, and soul. Mm-hmm. And some of that is dictated by who you are as a person and, and what your belief system is. So. I think what we got was a version of who she is. Absolutely. Shout out to her former employer who immediately acted and, you know, whether it was what they believed or, you know, saving face and doing the right thing. Uh, mm-hmm. You know, she got, she got the ax, man. And, and uh, I feel like those. Well deserved. Yeah. And, and, and you know, uh, she got a dog taken away from her. So you can see that those type of actions have recourse. Yeah, definitely. Well, what, what it is is also, you know, when we were going through the presidency and um, Donald Trump and Hillary was really, you know, in the rut of it, I, I, I felt, you know, racism will increase. White entitlement will kind of go up because Donald Trump wears that on his sleeve. Man, let me tell you something, man. We have a president who is um, openly capitalistic. Uh, Not to cut you off, we have a president who's a piece of shit. Go ahead, sorry. (laughs) 
So, so we have a we have a president who's who's openly cap, uh, capitalistic, and at his he rallies, said, "If you loot, shoot." Yeah, I mean, at his at his rallies, you could just see the demographic, you could see the undertone, you could see certain things that were playing out in real time. And if you're any type of a person who understands what's happening, you know, you, you start to become aware and you start to, to, to actually, it's, it's materializing in front of you. Now, obviously, you know, you can't come out and say certain things because you got to be PC, but I mean, nobody's blind. Anybody who has any level of intelligence can kind of see how it's, how it's playing out. Yeah. You know what? One, one point I wanted to make, and I love the Jalen Rose, how he really went in. I love black people as much as they love black culture. I have to say this. I wish America loved black people as much as they love black culture. I have to say this. I wish America loved black people as much as they love black culture. There are so many times that it gets cherry picked and it gets piggybacked but only when it's convenient. And sometimes it happens in entertainment and athletics. We're not here designed only to entertain. We're actually living and breathing human beings that have mo a multitude of intelligence, work ethic, discipline, and talent. We've overcome a lot just like so many other races. This didn't just start happening. You can Google. We've been sprayed with water hoses. We've been attacked by dogs. We've overcome it. I'm old enough to remember I have a dream. Fight the power. Screw the police. Now it's I can't breathe. This is not new. And it's not going to come from just us. We need people who aren't black. We need people who aren't brown. When you know these things are happening in your society to have a voice, a legitimate one, lock and step with us, protest with us, post with us, not just when it's convenient, Preach. when it can be uncomfortable. The illusion, the, the image of Colin Kaepernick taking the knee before a football game during the national anthem is the exact one that we see in Minnesota. When a guy was laying on the ground for over eight minutes, handcuffed with a knee to his neck. And Tried to kill him. Murdered. Let's start calling these things what they are. These are murderings. These are lynchings. These things have caused pain throughout our society, for our community, for hundreds of years. Hello. We've been screaming out for your assistance. Hello. But one point I would love to make is... You know, because I have a lot of white friends, I have a lot of white counterparts, and I know they're not racist. You know, they're not a racist. Mm -hmm. You know, so with that being said, the people who stand there and literally watch it, you're part of the problem. And the reason why I say you're part of the problem is because it's okay that you get the privilege, mm -hmm. but then when it hits the fan, you falling back but you don't have a problem doing business. You don't have a problem making money. You don't have a problem, you know, building, but now it's a time where it's almost like we'll have a white counterpart and they might get into a problem in the store. They know their black friend is coming to hold them down. We feel in that way right now. It's a good point, man. It's a good point. And, and, and to that point, um, how I feel in general is, I deal with one race, and that's the human race. Uh, I don't care if you black, white, brown, and different. I believe in being fair, honest, and, and decent to people. And to your point, it's almost like everybody's not with that smoke. Everybody is like, they can believe you, they can agree with you, but to go and stand with you kind of puts them in a, in a very uncomfortable place. And I think the majority of people, unless they're riled up or just fed up, will stay in a very neutral space. And I feel like, you know what? I'm gonna say I'm guilty of it as well. 
Because not every issue that came up, I've stood up for. Not every issue that, that came about, I've, I've been vocal about. I might have felt it, but I might not have done anything. So I think people are more apt to kind of feel it inward and not be expressive or take action. Yeah, well, I mean, you know, I'm pissed off. I know you're pissed off. Everybody's saying they are, they're pissed off, mm -hmm. but we don't feel that people were pissed off in the 60s. They weren't pissed off in the 70s. Mm -hmm. So, you know, it's almost like, what are we, now it's about solutions. What are we going to do? Are we going to constantly complain about it and everybody's coming into their own little cliques and, you know, having all this dialogue and conversation? But what are we going to do about it? You understand? Because it's almost like, you know, I, I looked at a scene in Minnesota and it looked like we was in the 60s. You know, I mean, they, they, they're, they're spraying pepper spray. The difference between that and the 60s, they was using water. Well, I'm going to say this, Al. I, I, I like your transition into talking about solutions because that's what we need. And complaining about it wasn't working. Um, bringing it to the public eye was not working. So when you, 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 you constantly push and you push and you poke the bear, eventually you're going to get the reaction that you didn't realize was coming. So these acts of racism and police brutality and, 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 and really undervaluing, you know, black lives, black and brown lives. Can I make a point? Sorry to, sorry to cut you off, E. You use the word undervalue. I love that word. You know why? What's that? Music, fashion, swag. Entertainment. It's okay for, it's, it's okay yeah. for you guys to steal that and, and, and capitalize and make money off of us. But then when things hit the fan, now, you know, it's real. Well, this is when we need you to step up. Like, you know, I know you're going to be political. I'm upset, E. You know what I mean? I, I feel some kind of way. I'm glad we, we you know, we created this platform, you know, for, for, for me to honestly get my rocks off. Because, you know, there's so, everywhere I go, you know, everybody's complaining. This is crazy. But, you know, it's, it, you know, like I told, I told a friend of mine the other day, I said, you're from Cuba. You can mm -hmm. go back to Cuba. I told another friend, he's a Dominican. You can go back to DR. What is it about black people that they knew they had to strip their culture? They had to strip who they were mm -hmm. and take them to another land. And they literally don't know who they are because we're the only people, if it hits the fan, we can't be deported. We can't go back to Africa because the Africans look at us like, no, don't come here. So what is it about America and the black man? And I really, I really want to get to the bottom of that because they know something about the black man that we don't know. Well, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to get to the core of it, Al, and, and, and I'm always a solution-based guy. And, you know, I try and speak with um, intelligence and try and speak with... Um, experience and, and some type of logic because if I speak from an emotional space, I feel like that's how they use it against me. An angry black man, right? So my anger allows them to, 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 to not hear me because they, oh, he's just another angry black man. But why, but, but why is that? The, that's the stigma. When a woman speaks up, she's an angry black woman. Of course. So, so, so you have to, you have to now elevate and understand that you, you can voice your opinion, right? So I'll give you an example. If you deal in corporate America and you curse somebody out that did you wrong, you're probably not going to get anywhere. But usually when you deal in corporate America, people send emails and the email will have a scathing tone that will be worse than any curse out that you can ever get but that's the corporate America way that they do things. So if you want to beat somebody at their game, you got to first understand the game. So we are yeah. in a game. Make well, no wait, okay. can, I, can I give you a solution? Go ahead, shoot. Might be too harsh. Maybe I shouldn't say it. Because <laughs> I was going to honestly say, you know, what, you know, 
I have to reference to Malcolm what he said. He said, we will not get what we deserve until we do our own thing. Because he said, if we walked away from the economy, the economy would crash. Mm -hmm. And that's the power we have. But we, we move and we've been so, so, so systematically programmed that now it's like we're, we're dependent on the system or we're dependent on the government. But they know that we have the talent. Well, well let, me just, let me just share something with you. I had this conversation today with two of my really good friends who I trust and love and, 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 and respect. We have to fix the problems in our own community first to be aligned and to be together and be able to value each other. We, Big point. We, we, because, you know, when you look at the crimes that are committed against black people, these are being highlighted, but the overwhelming uh, majority of them are from us. So what happens is, it's a system that perpetuates a certain type of behavior. I've studied this stuff enough to understand if you put somebody in a very tough environment and you take 10 people and you do a controlled study, seven of them won't make it. Three of them might, but you've controlled the majority. So neighborhoods, access, education, uh, resources, all of those things dictate your outcomes, right? So if you disband the family and you devalue the head of household, how do you expect the people to rise? It takes a, a, almost like a generational thing. If my moms and my pops and my, my older brother are a part of a system that perpetuates a certain type of behavior, what do you expect me to be? Absolutely, good point. So we first have to start with self-love. Mm. knowing ourselves, owning who we are, then start to love our brother and sister and treat them as we would want to be treated. Then, as you and I come together, we can now address the, per the problems in our community with other people who have like-minded views. Mm. And that starts with education, in the home, and, and it's just so many systemic problems that we deal with that unfortunately are so deep-rooted that these are hundreds of years of things that we've been oppressed. So what we're dealing with is not the people who oppress us, it's the behavior that, that is just so inherent that we can't get past and we're frustrated and we don't know how to change it. So I say, if you wanna change but, but it's, society- it's sad. I'm sorry to cut you off, go ahead. But, but if you wanna change, change society, start with the th one thing that you can change. Change yes, you. And then if I change me, I can tell you, L, guess what, man? I did this for my diet. I started to read this. I got with this focus group and I'm doing self-help things that can elevate me as a person. And I'm sharing with you because I want to see you be better. And now you start to tell each one, teach one. No question. But who is the leader? Who is the voice of our people? That's where I was going. Mm. That's where I was going. See, E, I was going to literally say, now, the leaders are rappers. The leaders are athletes wearing spandex. So then you have a, then you have a generation of young children who are wearing, they're males wearing spandex because the leaders are the people who are in, in, in entertainment. And society, they know that and they want it that way. You know why? Let me tell you why. Let me, let me just interject for one second. Go ahead. They're wearing spandex and they have the right to. They're in it for one reason. They want to come out of their situation. They want to make it and they want to fulfill this thing that they covet that they tell you is valuable. Money, you know, um, uh, tangible things, you know, the ability to, to, to move how you want and gain wealth. That is what they place the value on in this society. And when a kid makes it, he buys a car, he buys a house, she buys a house, whatever. And then you run out of things and you start putting tattoos on your neck. Yeah, but we're, 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 we're a whole bunch. Of, see, this whole generation is a whole bunch of followers. Like God created us to be creative. So why is it 
when I go in popping areas, everybody dressed the same. <laughs> everybody looks the same. Like culture. that makes no sense. It's culture, though. Did, did you did, do you see the children? Our children. You, I'm saying it. You don't like it? I don't care. You you look like you got mops on your head. You look crazy. That's not that's not a clean cut young black educated man. Jay Z because he's doing it. Jay's worth a billion dollars. He can do what he wants. You being a student athlete trying to get a scholarship to Duke or North Carolina, one of these major schools, I think it's a better look for a nice season. I'm not telling you how to wear your hair, but when you look at when we have no leaders and the only people these kids follow is entertainers, who are they going to follow? Who are they going to want to be like? The entertainers. Wow.